Hello, I'm Aaron Wanger. I'm a principal scientist at PacBio. I want to thank you for joining our Rare Disease Week virtual event. Throughout this event, we'll have a series of seminars, on-demand talks, and a panel discussion on the topic of the present and future of HiFi whole genome sequencing for rare disease research. In this context, uh, rare disease refers to one that is, affects a small percentage of the population. It's often defined as less than one in a thousand individuals, but there are many rare diseases that are quite a bit uh, less common than that. For example, disorders like Hodge-Duchenne syndrome affect around one in a million people in the world, and there are many disorders that have been reported only in single-digit people. While any single rare disease is affecting only a small percentage of the population, rare diseases collectively impact many, adding up to perhaps 8% of the population. And some of these rare diseases are quite well known, disorders like cystic fibrosis that affect around 1 in 10,000 people in the United States, or Huntington disease at a similar frequency. And some, though they are rare in the general population, are actually relatively common in subpopulations. For example, Tay-Sachs syndrome affects only 1 in 300,000 people in the entire U.S. population, but around 1 in 3,600 in the Ashkenazi population. Most of these diseases have a genetic cause. It's estimated around 80% of rare diseases are genetic in origin. They show both dominant and recessive inheritance patterns. Hodge-Duchenne syndrome and Huntington's disease, which I mentioned earlier, are both a uh, dominant pattern where you'll see unaffected parents having an affected child due to a uh, de novo mutation in that child. There's also recessive disorders like Tay-Sachs syndrome and cystic fibrosis in which two unaffected parents carry one broken copy of a gene uh, and when a child inherits both broken copies, they manifest a disorder. In addition to these two different inheritance patterns, the type of genetic variant that causes the disorder varies across disorders, even within a disorder. We see uh, mutations ranging from single base changes to small additions or deletions of bases to very large changes uh, or expansions of, uh, of, of repetitive sequence. And this is an area where improved ability of genetic technology over the last 50 years has improved or has allowed for the detection of more genetic variants and thus a better uh, explanation for genetic disorders. Uh, starting with karyotypes, which could detect large chromosomal abnormalities and explain perhaps 5% of rare disease cases. Moving through microarrays, which added the ability to detect large copy number variants, doubling the number of cases that could be explained. Then coming to short read DNA sequencing, uh, which allowed the detection of smaller variants and again increased the number of cases that could be explained. This has been a general trend of more variants leading to more explanations. Rare disease has really been a huge success story for DNA sequencing. Uh, the National Institute of Health in the United States launched the Centers for Mendelian Genomics to apply DNA sequencing to uh, increase the understanding of rare disease. And this program has been discovering around 263 new disease genes each year. Despite this great progress, many rare disease cases still remain unexplained. Uh, in the context of the UK National Health Service, uh, short read whole genome sequencing has been applied to around 7,000 individuals uh, with uh, an explanation for around 16% of those. Uh, at a similar, uh, similar case in, in Sweden at Karolinska University Hospital, around 3,000 individuals had had whole genome sequencing with an explanation for around 40%. Um, so in both cases, while the number of cases explained is improved with this uh, better ability to detect variants, uh, still the majority of cases uh, remain unexplained. One of the key reasons that cases remain unexplained is though DNA sequencing with short reads uh, detects many variants, it also misses many variants. It's not a comprehensive assay. This has been uh, discussed in a, a review article from the Centers for Mendelian Genomics uh, discussing what remains to be done with one of the key things being an improved ability to detect the variants missed with short reads, specifically uh, small insertions and deletions, which have limited sensitivity, and then larger structural variants, which are very poorly detected with short reads. Uh, in particular, in the structural variant area, there are um, events in the 50 to 1,000 base pair range, mobile element insertions, copy number neutral events like inversions and translocations, uh, and trinucleotide repeat expansions. This then brings us to HiFi sequencing. Uh, HiFi sequencing has a better ability to detect variants and continues this uh, march of technology to a more comprehensive human genome. 
Hi-fi reads are both long and accurate. So they show similar modal accuracy to short read sequencing with the typical hi-fi read being more than 99.9% .9 accurate, but the read lengths being significantly longer than short read DNA sequencing around hundred times longer with a typical read around 15,000 bases and the distribution like shown on the left here, 15 to 25,000 bases. This combination of both read length and accuracy helps hi-fi reads outperform other approaches for variant detection. It's able to detect effectively all the variants seen with short read sequencing, plus additional variants in difficult readings of the genome and structural variants. Uh, this is recently uh, well illustrated in the Precision FDA Truth Challenge V2, which was a competition put on by the US National Institute of Standards and Technology and the FDA to evaluate different DNA sequencing technologies for their ability to detect variants in human genomes. And in this, uh, in, in in the results of this uh, of this challenge, the single most accurate call set was from PacBio HiFi reads, uh, with the short read set from uh, Illumina having about six times as many errors, and alternative long read technologies having nearly thirty times more errors. And in particular, HiFi reads improved detection of structural variants, especially those in the fifty to one thousand base pair range mobile element insertions, the copy number neutral events like inversions and translocations, repeat expansions, and then small variants like single nucleotide variants and indels in difficult to map regions. So this is specifically the types of variation that was called out in the uh, Standards for Mendelian Genomics, what remains to be done. To show some examples of how HiPi reads look in these types of variants, here is showing a copy number neutral inversion. So around 407 bases of the genome that's been flipped around in the uh, reverse complement orientation. Uh, you see here hi-fi reads for this individual showing uh, two different alleles, one of these inherited from the individual's mother and the other from the father, with the inversion being present in one of the alleles. So it's a heterozygous inversion. You can see the inversion uh, in, the, in the read shown as the two different colors, um, mapping, uh, sh showing a read going in the forward, direction, the pink color, then the reverse direction, blue, and then back to the pink direction or vice versa. You can also see uh, that, that this event is uh, consistent with, with other small variation in the same reads. For example, this, uh, this uh, heterozygous single nucleotide variant uh, shows red in one allele and, and not in the other, uh, showing that this structural variant is uh, consistent with the general haplotype structure. HIFI reads also uh, improve the ability to detect repeat expansions quite significantly. This is showing a single HIFI read on the left spanning a CTG repeat that's uh, or a CTG uh, triplet that's repeated 2,285 times uh, in the myotonic dystrophy gene DMPK1. Uh, there are a, a few thousand bases before the repeat. Then you see uh, just many copies of this CTG over and over again. And then finally back to a few thousand bases of, uh, of sequence after the repeat. Uh, this ability to, to span the repeats lets you count the exact copy numbers, um, but it also provides the full sequence of the repeat. And that can be important in, in cases like shown on the right, which shows a, a waterfall diagram of hi-fi reads, also from myotonic dystrophy, uh, where each line is a different hi-fi read, and shown in blue are the CTG repeats, uh, but these uh, the repeat expansions are often not pure repeats, and there can be uh, slight differences, so-called interruptions. And this individual has a has a CAG interruption after about a hundred copies in, uh, and you can see the ability to re to reveal the sequence uh, lets you see uh, that there is an interruption, which has implications for the stability of the repeat and how to interpret it biologically. It's not only structural variants where HIFI reads improve the ability to detect. HIFI reads also improve detection of small variants, specifically in difficult to map regions. Uh, this is showing a, a well-known locus containing the gene CYP2D6. This gene uh, is in a locus that has uh, local homology. So two regions in this, uh, in this locus look similar to each other. The one's boxed in blue. Uh, and thus short reads are not able to be confidently placed in one location or the other. HIFI reads, on the other hand, are long enough to connect through to the unique sequence and fully span through this region, uh, resolving these blue regions uh, with, uh, with reads. And further, because those reads are accurate, you're able to call variants in those regions that are missed with short reads. So the length provides mappability, then the accuracy provides, uh, provides high uh, precision and recall for variant detection. This is also a second example shown, uh, showing the ability of HIFI reads to phase. So you can see that there are two different uh, 
types of reads seen in the in the hi-fi set. So there's allele number one, perhaps maternally inherited, and allele number two, paternally inherited. This improved ability to detect variants has been shown to explain more rare disease cases. The very first example was recently published by uh, Dr. Ewan Ashley, who uh, who was a scientist who who applied the technology initially. Uh, he featured it in, in a book uh, called The Genome Odyssey. And in this book, he tells the story of an individual um, who for many years uh, had had recurring tumors in his heart, um, at 22 years old, had had a short read whole genome sequencing uh, without uh, identifying a genetic explanation for his disorder. Uh, a few years later, uh, Dr. Ashley ap applied PAC biosequences to this individual and was able to identify a 2.2 KB deletion uh, that explained the disorder. Um, so this is an example of how this improved ability to detect a structural variant was able to explain a case uh, unresolved with short read sequencing. Since that time, PAC bio hi-fi sequencing has been adopted by leading medical institutes and consortia. Uh, three of those will be featured in this rare disease week. We'll have Dr. Tomi Pastanen from Children's Mercy Kansas City, Dr. Alexander Hoishin from Radboud University, and Dr. Naomichi Matsumoto from Yokohama City University. Uh, they will be discussing how long read hi-fi genomes uh, improve the ability to detect variants in genomes, detecting all the variations seen with short read sequencing, plus, uh, region, or plus variants that are difficult for short reads, like structural variants, uh, translocations, inversions, repeat expansions, and the small variants are difficult to map regions. And this will con this continues the trend of more variants providing more explanations, increasing the ability to explain rare disease cases up to 67%. In addition to uh, providing this scientific value, it's also, of course also important that the technology is practical to apply. And uh, to improve the, uh, the throughput at which hi-fi sequencing can be applied, we collaborated last year with the, uh, Dr. Tomi Pastanen and the Genomic Answer for Kids program at Children's Mercy Kansas City uh, to develop high throughput sample prep and high throughput da data analysis methods for PAC bio hi fi sequencing in a rare disease. And they applied this, uh, these high throughput methods to look at 80 different cases, which Dr. Pastina will discuss. Uh, the protocols that were developed as a result of this collaboration are now available. Uh, you can go to pacb.com slash rare disease to see the application brochure. And there are two on-demand sessions during this rare disease week that provide more details on these workflows. Uh, Christine Lambert will be discussing the sample preparation in a talk uh, titled Scalable Workflow for Constructing Hi-Fi Libraries. And William Rao will be discussing the data analysis methods uh, in a talk titled A Bioinformatics Workflow for Comprehensive Detection and Prioritization of Variants with Hi-Fi Reads. So that's what's accomplished today. In addition to, uh, to that, we are working towards a future of Hi-Fi sequencing and rare disease research. And we see a few key areas where there'll be where there will be and need to be advances. Um, the first is improved methods that rely less on the reference genome. So when we talk about variation, it's typically a difference between one human individual and the standard human reference. Um, this works very well as a good way to describe variation, but it has its limits. In particular, if an individual is much different than the reference genome at a particular location or if the individual has sequence that's simply not present in the reference, it's difficult to represent that uh, in a reference-based method. And some variation can be missed when you focus only on things that can be described against the current human reference. Um, one important way to address this is to start rather than with taking DNA sequencing reads and projecting them onto the reference, rather taking DNA sequencing reads, assembling a genome de novo, uh, and then taking that complete genome and interpreting it. Uh, this is possible with hi-fi reads. You can get assembles of, or assemblies of individual humans that rival the reference genome in accuracy and completeness. Uh, and th th this is a key area for methods development, moving away from reliance, at least reliance on a single reference genome, to true de novo genomes for, uh, for individuals. Another key area is expanding the number of individuals that have had that have long read sequencing. While today, long read sequencing has been applied to hundreds of individuals, in the future, that will be uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, ultimately millions. And these much larger data sets that better represent the population diversity will help us understand more how variation, particularly the type of variation uniquely detected with hi-fi reads, uh, is distributed across the population. Uh, this will also 
be critical for rare disease as one of the key steps in interpreting a genome in a rare disease individual is to first identify which variants in that individual are just common polymorphisms and thus unlikely to explain their disorder. And finally, we're looking towards a future where every child at birth will have a HIFI whole genome uh, that, that will be sequenced as part of something like a newborn screen. Uh, and th this genome will serve as a platform for interpreting their phenotype throughout their life. If the individual happens to have a rare disease, this genome can be, uh, can be evaluated to try to explain that rare disease. Uh, and th the genome can also be used to look at, to predict how the individual may respond to, to drugs and pharmacogenomics uh, or to understand cancer risk or, or other, other factors. Um, so this complete genome will uh, be the one genetic test that can encompass all others. To get started today with HiFi sequencing and rare disease research, I recommend you go to pacb.com slash rare disease. You can also get started with comprehensive variant detection at pacb.com slash variant. Learn more about HiFi sequencing at pacb.com slash HiFi. Um, and to have any questions about PAC biosequencing answered by one of our scientists, you can go to pacb.com slash scientist. In addition, if you're interested in, uh, in understanding human disease, uh, we recommend you apply to the 2021 Clinical Research Smart Grant Program, which PacBio is co-sponsoring with our certified service provider at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Uh, to apply to this grant, you go to pacb.com slash smartgrant, S-M-R-T-G-R-A-N-T. Uh, the submissions will, submission window will open on May 3rd and be open through June 11th. Uh, the winner will be uh, will be awarded six smart bell libraries and six smart cells ADEM of sequencing on the SQL2 system uh, together with bioinformatics support from the service provider.